was one of the last five years' most dramatic moments in CAD history when Daimler decided to swap system, to move from Dassault Systems' CAD solution Katia to Siemens Enix. No doubt this wasn't a project without risks. But today, four years after the decision was taken, the change project is almost finalized. So the project as communicated during the Daimler Tech days is that the project is running very well. Though the executive management expressed the overall happiness about the project and uh, it's in time, in budget. Also there are very ambitious targets set and currently we are having the situation that uh, the current plan is that already end of March 2015 the transition from Katia to NX will be completed. So, a new CAD system, what's the big deal? Well, it's not a walk in the park when plus 6,000 users are involved. There has to be some valuable gains to be made before you launch a project like this. So, why did Daimler Mercedes choose to move ahead in the NX direction? What problems have been encountered during the journey? And how were they solved? PLM TV News has the true story of what really happened. At least from a top management point of view. We have an exclusive interview with one of the most prominent PLM executives in the Daimler organization at the time, Professor Alfred Katzenbach. As director of IT management in Mercedes-Benz R&D department, he was responsible for the preparation and the presentation of the project to the Daimler board. Today, he is retired and talks frankly about what happened back in 2009 and 2010 and during the implementation process. Yes, I was involved and I have a long tradition in this area, that's more than 20 years. And when we reflect the change from Katia V4 to Katia V5, we can see that such a change is like a change of a system. The version is like a change of a system. And though with the experience of that, we decided whenever there will be a next opportunity, to change from one version to the other, we will ask the strategic question and we will uh, uh, look for different options and select the best options for the company. General, would you describe the transition process as a smooth one? No, frankly no. It is a transition process, it is a change process. And uh, like you know the famous book from Geoffrey Moore, you have the variety of people, you have the innovators, you have the visioners, which are easy to convince, you have the early maturity, which are also help you, and, and you have the later maturity that is a little bit more difficult, and you have some legates. And uh, these legates to convince is a hard job to do. And frankly, if you change such a solution, you, you have some pitfalls. Pitfalls are normally uh, these cases which are not expected and the, you can convince the users in the best way if you have such a pitfall, if you are very early to fix it. And this, uh, and this is an experience we have together with our uh, colleagues from, from Siemens PLM. The ability to fix a problem in a short time is absolutely great. Not everything is fixed today, there will be also some in future. But this is natural in each project and nobody can tell me that such a project will run without any difficulties. That's an illusion. Because it's complex, it's reality, it's 6,000 users with 6,000 different ways of doing the work and, and so on. But it is academic to, to ask the question, are these pitfalls and are these problems bigger than moving from to V5 to V6, than moving from V5 to NX or not. Also, if you stay with the same solution uh, to change one version to the other version, you will also run into some pitfalls. Okay, pitfalls will occur in a program change of this magnitude. They were even a part of what was expected. So, wouldn't it have been more comfortable to remain in the Katia environment? No, says both Siemens PLM CEO Chuck Grindstaff and Professor Katzenbach. 
Um, they made a choice based on the entire set of problems that they have at Daimler, um, the capabilities of NX, which um, meet their needs, the ability to integrate that together with our team center product, and the future vision that we have, really all three of those things together. It's unfortunate sometimes to, to hear comments made that um, you know, we, uh, some of our competitors think they have the only technology that works, they don't. Um, it's, it's actually remarkable to hear such things. Um, our customers every day do the kinds of remarkable things with our technology that we're proud of, like the Mars Rover, like building cars at Mercedes, like General Motors, like Canon, I mean, you name it, some of the best products in the world designed with our products because they are cutting edge. And, and um, you know, the Daimler chose it because NX can do the job and it can do the job most effectively compared to the competition. So what were the motives when it comes to this uh, replacement? The main motive is to support the, the engineering process inside the company. Uh, inside Daimler we have a, a very high sophisticated processes in place and so the new solution, this was the most important thing, has uh, to fulfill and support these processes we have in place. From the start of the beginning, my intention was to stay with the two vendor strategy. Right, a two-vendor strategy has its advantages. For example, from a competitive angle, monopoly is generally not good for either innovation or economic development. But in the case of Katia versus Enix, a big problem was that Katia V6 required usage of Dassault Systems PLM solution Innovia V6. In this discussion, it was very clear, and in, in all this investigation, that uh, with the Enovia V6 as it is today, it will not be possible to uh, support the process as I mentioned before. At the end, if we go for a V6 solution and, and for uh, a Katia V6, Enovia V6 is mandatory, they told us that this was not possible. That means that uh, in such a solution we had to, to run two PLM uh, uh, solutions in parallel which costs double of money. And then in the second phase, when we had to evaluate whether we go with a, a proprietary solution only with Siemens, or to go with a, a, a two-vendor approach, there we uh, involved the key users very intensively, and uh, they did some process scenarios, worked on process scenarios with the one or the other solution. And so, uh, when I went to the board, to ask for approval of, of the decision, I didn't go to the board alone. I went to the board with my colleagues from the operational users. And they also told our, our board members, yes, we want to go into this direction. So it was a decision which was done in common. Not only from the business, not only from IT, it was a decision done in common. One of the problems in a context like this would be legacy data. How was that solved? Uh, legacy data was not a big deal because we decided in, in a very early uh, phase in, in 2006 where nobody uh, uh, talked about uh, a potential change uh, that we store every cat data which is in our systems marked also in JT. Though all the legacy data which is uh, from 2006 and younger are in parallel stored in JT and available in JT in, in a very high quality. So there was nearly no necessity to migrate old data. They only divided the data into uh, different categories. Uh, there was one category uh, depending on the potential use in future in which we started to model from scratch in the new system. Some will be migrated and reworked some will be only migrated and not reworked. Professor Katzenbach talked about the migration process and he said it was an advantage that they have started to use the JT format. Yeah, definitely an advantage. Uh, having a, the ability to actually use that within models. I mean, you can use JT quite significantly within models and actually make some changes to it. And if you have to then remodel it, it becomes easier. So it's a, it's a good approach. They were probably thinking about you know, how would they keep their data in formats that are usable in other ways later? My guess also is in the automotive industry, since 
even before JT became an ISO standard, it was kind of a de facto standard within automotive. So they were probably using that already to support uh, collaboration with uh, certain customers, or well, the customers, really suppliers probably, or partners. Uh, so this was probably a natural, a natural step and probably eased the, the transition for the data transition for them. You know, to go through with huge projects, psychological factors are extremely important to deal with. For instance, as soon as any problem occurs, fast action to solve it is important, as is the necessity to prepare your organization with practical business cases to prove your point, says Professor Katzenbach. We selected around 250 business cases. And for each business case, we worked on the methodology on, with concrete uh, productive parts. And we made videos of them that, uh, that they have a reference. And with this reference uh, uh, processes, we, we, we went to the user. And frankly, this is uh, uh, an additional benefit which was not expected before, but now it's a real benefit with this change we can take care that all users inside the company, and these are more than 6,000, now use the same methodology by uh, using the CAT system. And, and this harmonization uh, uh, is only possible if you do such a major change. This is a huge project, no doubt about that. And you know, changing CAD system always creates worried people. So what were they about, the, the, the complaints that people have when you are swapping system? So what you described is certainly human and its nature. But overall we are very happy and both teams, the Daimler team and the Siemens PLM software team are working heavily together. We have established a very intense uh, development partnership where some people from the R&D are based here in Stuttgart and other places worldwide to support Daimler in this transition phase and we are very happy how it ended up so far. It's a rare occasion that a big company like Daimler swaps systems. What are the implications when it comes to effectivity in the product development process? Does it have to sort of stop up for a moment while they are implementing and learning about the new system? My experience with companies that have done those type of transitions, there's always a period of time where training is needed and people have to get up to speed on the new capabilities. My assumption that's true within Daimler as well, and there's always that kind of learning curve that takes place. Now, you can minimize that through uh, just-in-time training, minimize that through having a, a leadership programs that get people up to speed or, and other education programs by having um, subject matter experts that are close to the team. So there's ways of getting uh, minimizing that, but yeah, there, I have to believe there's some level of that that goes on. But uh, so far you had a plan and you're sticking to that plan and it had worked out pretty well. The migration goes faster than planned as a matter of fact. First of all, the team who does this job does an excellent job. They are highly motivated and they have an intrinsic motivation to make it happen. For a user, it is not very funny to change between the one or the other system uh, uh, permanently uh, forth and back. So the users have also an interest to change in a fast way that they can stay with one solution and, and not all the time changing between the one and the other. So that's a pressure, but, uh, and this is the same experience uh, Chrysler did. Chrysler did the same transformation, and they were also much faster than expected.